All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Today, we are going to interview a very, very special guest, a 51-year-old who managed to make two high-ticket sales in 10 days. I promise you guys, you would have not met a 51-year-old like this guy I'm about to show you, okay? Um, so if you're tuning in, I see some of you guys coming in, please hashtag live. If you're watching this on replay, please hashtag replay. And just please help me drop a one just to make sure that I am uh, actually audible, all right? Um, without further ado, uh, I just wanted to say that Jeff is one of my Freedom Circle students and this guy, um, he is definitely one of a kind, let me tell you. Um, yes, let me introduce and bring over Mr. Jeff Brown. Hey, Jeff, how's it going? Hey, <laughs> what's up? All right, good to have you, bro. Um, so I see a couple of people here. Um, yeah, so if everyone's tuning in right now, hashtag live. If you're watching this on replay, just hashtag replay. Um, how are you feeling, bro? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Happy to be here. Very, very well as well. I'm sure this is your cup of tea. I see a couple of comments coming in, a familiar name. That's uh, Jeff's twin brother, which we'll talk a little bit more <laughs> in a while. It's very, very interesting. Oh, um, for some reason, I don't some... see the comments. Okay. Yeah, if you highlight them, I'll see them, but I'm not seeing the comments on my end. All right. No worries. I got you, brother. Hey. Hello. Hello. Very nice to have you guys here. Awesome. So let's start with the basics, bro. Um, why don't you share with everyone a little bit about your introduction as well as your background so that they get to know you a little bit better? All right, yeah. So, I mean, all right. Am I back? Yes, oh. you are back right now. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you've already highlighted that I'm old. I'm 51 years old. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm actually going to be 52 in March. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, okay. Let me explain first. It's not that I want to play the age game, but to me, honestly, it's super inspiring that you're able to do what you're doing uh, at your current age. That's the only reason why I keep highlighting on it because... Um, a lot of people tell me, you know, like age is a factor or a challenge when honestly, um, you are literally living proof of it, you know, and that I think that's the beauty about it. Yes, go for it, bro. Well, well not only that, okay, I'd like to highlight and underscore here that any, not only can anybody do this at any age, but I had zero, zero experience with uh, affiliate marketing uh, before four months ago. I mean, other than Amazon affiliate marketing, but I really don't like to include that in affiliate marketing because it's really not the same. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. That's also actually quite crazy as well because, technically speaking, um, honestly, like just a few months in, you haven't been at this. Uh, long at all to be honest like i personally tried been trying this for many many years so yeah that's going to be interesting and i'm pretty sure that a lot of people are tuning in right now uh to kind of understand a little bit more about um uh, that right like how did you do it you know what i mean like four months might seem long to some people but to those people who've been trying to do this for a long time that's actually quite an achievement so yeah maybe we can talk a little bit about how did you got on to this affiliate marketing journey like four months ago? What was the motivation? What was the drive? Well, I mean, one motivation is sitting right next to me, and this is my wife, Mimi. Hey, hey, hello, hello. hello. Very nice to finally see you. I've heard a lot about you too, Jeff. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. All right, so this, this, is my, this is my warrior. This is my hero. And she's a big reason why I wanted to do this. Uh, so I wanted to seek out a legitimate, legitimate way to make uh, money online, a secondary source of income. Uh, I wanted to plan toward retirement better. You know, I, I do not, I, I like my nine to five, but uh, unlike a lot of people, I, I really like it, but I don't want to work until I'm 65 or 68 years old. My plan is to retire uh, nine, 10 years from now. 
Yeah, that that that's definitely um, something that you can work towards and uh, a major goal for uh, a lot of us, really, right? So some of us start, some of us starts later. Um, it doesn't matter, to be honest, because a full good year of doing this could literally change the entire game for you. And based on your momentum, um, I think you were doing something else just before we met. So by the time we met, it was, what, three months into your journey already? when we met right exactly so i had been three months into affiliate marketing already uh, on a different program and uh struggling and i i'll admit this so I'm, I'm i'm really persistent and i'm super competitive so i was i was getting impatient you know it felt like i was spinning my wheels so to speak you know and uh i like to identify problems as i go along and i've always seen this and viewed this as a as a as a long term thing, you know, uh, it's a it's a it's not a race; it's a marathon, you know. And but I still wanted to be able to identify uh, things that I was doing wrong, things that weren't working correctly, uh, so that I could improve and and mitigate these things and uh, correct them. But yeah, I was spinning my wheels until I met you, man, and. Uh, yeah, I, I am still amazed until today, guys. Like, if you guys are, if you agree with me that, you know, how energetic, how uh, motivated and how open he is to, you know, trying to make it work, please drop a one because seriously, it's crazy, right? Um, maybe I'm I'm speculating the age bit, but I, I suppose uh, at that point, usually <laughs> you would be close. So trying new things and be so optimistic because you went through life in a, at a certain stage. You know, I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just guessing, right? If I was at that age, I'd probably be like this. But you're so open, receptive, and optimistic, like to me. Right. I, I mean, that, I've always been very energetic. I've got this motor that's continuously running. And uh, and I'm also very stubborn. So I, I don't give up and I don't want to quit. And... Until I'm forced to, or until the, the mission is complete. So all my life, I've been handed obstacles. People told me I wouldn't be able to do something or or achieve something. I mean, uh, I they told me I was too old to join the army at, all, at almost 23. You know, and I, I I joined the army and went through basic training. You know, and so that that's that's my background. And uh, I got I I was in the U.S. Army for about five years, and then I got out at the age of 28. And that is when uh, my wife and I met. I, I joined uh, my current company and my first assignment was in Egypt. And that's where my wife and I met was in Egypt on my first assignment with my current, current company right now. Uh, she had finished high school and was, uh, was living there in, in Cairo, Egypt. That's where we met. So yeah, the, I, I probably, I probably would have done this uh, online business uh, a little earlier, but you know, uh, my wife had gone through chronic kidney disease and was on dialysis for four years. As a matter of fact, she received her kidney transplant in 2018 in Boston. Uh, so when I introduced my wife as, as a warrior and my hero, that is an understatement, okay? Because not only has she conquered I mean, she still has chronic kidney disease, but she received her kidney transplant. She's a kidney warrior. She also had to undergo breast cancer uh, surgery, have a, a tumor removed from her breast, uh, and five weeks of radiotherapy. Yeah. It's it's definitely, uh, yeah, it's it's... You are definitely a warrior, no doubt about that, right? No one can ever question no, it. No, uh, aren't you now? <laughs> yeah, did, did I, I you hear that? Saying, you're probably lost. It lost for a while. I am, I am, I am, <laughs> because you know we we can't imagine like what what how you had to battle it, how well, what was the support system and things like that. And actually, what was interesting when I got to know Jeff was he you, you told me you got started with social media because of fighting for this cause, right? Would you like to share with everyone a little bit about that? Because I think that's a very interesting thing. Right. Uh, so in 2016, 
we, we had gone through several, several people uh, at that stage that were deemed not a match for my wife. So at that point, I was becoming exasperated. And my twin brother, Jared, uh, bless his heart, he actually, he actually created a, fa a Facebook page on behalf of my wife uh, to campaign for a living kidney donor. So that's what kind of got the ball rolling. And after that, uh, we started uh, creating posters and videos going live on Facebook. And uh, it kind of revolutionized the way uh, kidney patients and or kidney donor advocates actually promote and advertise the need for a living, a living kidney donor for a kidney patient. Because up until that time, uh, people weren't creating Facebook pages like we were. They weren't uh, going live on Facebook and uh, creating posters. And, and I'll admit, so at the very beginning stages, you know, things were really raw and uh, I wasn't very good at it. You know, I had to improve. And uh, over time, repetition tends to dictate. And over time, I, I, I well, I feel like I got uh, better and I improved on the craft. But after my wife received her kidney transplant in 2018, it, it didn't end there. And, and my twin brother, Jared, and I, we never really thought what was going to happen after that. But it was incredible. People just started knocking uh, on my door, so to speak, and, and, and asking us if we uh, could help them also uh, on a campaign on Facebook. Uh, and we didn't we didn't only campaign on Facebook. We would uh, share the thing, uh, the posts on Twitter, uh, YouTube. I had a YouTube channel specifically for uh, kidney donor advocacy and uh, Instagram and TikTok. So it. In essence, I was already kind of well versed with uh, creating posts, uh, massaging and priming the, the algorithms, uh, and and very active on on social media. And to the point when I decided that all right, just give him a few seconds. So. Yeah, in essence, when I decided that my role was fulfilled with this kidney donor advocacy and I'd helped uh, enough people, I wanted to be able to help my family, uh, my family's future. I had to totally purge uh, Facebook and uh, retrain the algorithm, so to speak, because I was no longer going to do, be doing kidney donor advocacy. I was doing a, a totally, entirely different niche. That took a that took a long time. <laughs> yeah, I think the good the good the great thing about it is you did manage to train a certain skill, even though you didn't realize that was helping you to set up for what you're doing right now. Because when you do it, you're just a natural at it. You know, I think you've gone beyond what people think or feel or do. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, if I've gone beyond and above, but I, I, where where some people see like strengths and uh, and I, and then I've done well. I see like uh, imperfections and weaknesses, but and and that's and that's uh, perfectly normal, right? Because uh, most often it requires someone else to tell you that you are you are good at something or you're doing great at something, right? Because most often we have this kind of tunnel visions and we always have self-doubts along the way. So that's why like right. whenever I see someone doing well, I always give that positive reinforcement because a lot of things about me, I knew through my friends, right? Like I never realized it until they told me that and one day you will realize it as well, which is super awesome, right? Uh, which brings us to the next part, right? Um, so lots of people have just tuned in, guys. If you just tune in, just hashtag live or hashtag replay. Um, how many of you guys would like to learn a little bit more about how Jeff uh, managed to actually close his first two high ticket sales after three months of trial and error? I think in this fourth month, uh, you were able to do this. If you guys would love to hear more about it, please drop a number two. Um, and yeah. Let's jump into it, Jeff. <laughs> okay, let's. The, the idea is this, right? To inspire and to share uh, with others who are or who have been trying to actually close those high ticket sales. Like, what 
what is it that that you you did? Um, is there any insights that you can walk them through? How did you do it? Uh, anything at all that that might be valuable to anyone else that's currently watching this? Thank you guys for the comments. Right. Well, first and foremost, I mean, what I really was searching for exact, you know, answers to certain things, and uh, I, I was lacking direction and uh, a mentor, you know, and. Uh, I met I met you because I, I found your your Facebook group uh, through a search on Facebook and I had applied to uh, join your Facebook group and and then you uh, started messaging me just right right after I had applied and what took me uh, what took what caught me off guard and what surprised me is that just within minutes you wanted to go, uh, jump onto a Zoom call right. And I'm like, wow, yeah, let's do this. Let, let's get on a Zoom call. Let's let's knock this out. And so I liked the the forwardness, the uprightness, you know. And uh, the, that, that's my boy Rod. Uh, <laughs> uh. <clears throat> What's up, Rod? Uh, yeah, I knew uh, I've known Rod since like 2011. Uh, we met in Kuwait. Uh, he's in Sweden right now. Uh, he used to live here in Dubai. Very nice. And so I was, I was lacking uh, a mentorship. And uh, mm -hmm. to be quite honest with you, uh, Howie, uh, you are the one that, that truly made the difference. Uh, because once, once you came into the picture, you were able to give me uh, a direct line of communication with a mentor, which I lacked before, direct line of communication and uh, answers to, to questions. I mean that that's a that's a, that's going without saying that uh, you customized a plan for Jeff and said because you've answered these questions that you've given me this information you gave me a custom plan right and then so then not not only do I have a, a strategic custom plan to look at then I have homework daily assignments you know and then I have all these different steps to look at and, and things to accomplish. And so there's, there's a plan, there's a plan in place. And I, ha you know, I have a map to financial freedom to follow. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point. Um, I think a lot of people actually struggle because of that. Uh, and I can say it firsthand because I was one of them, right? Um, when I wasn't working with anyone, when I was still stubborn, thinking that I can do this on my own, honestly, I wasted so many years, guys. It's not even funny. Uh, and the only reason why I'm able to help uh, people like you, uh, you know, all of this uh, Freedom Circle students or the Elite <laughs> Income Empire students is because I went through those kind of pains. So it's almost like before you even take that wrong step, I could already identify it and I could like quickly grab you in the shirt and say, hey, go to this path instead. You know what I mean? Right? Um, right and yes, man. having that clarity on what you're doing, why you're doing, how it fits into an overall strategy is the thing that most people are uh, honestly lacking because from my personal experience, I've done what everyone else has done that made me fail, which is watch a ton of different videos, try multiple strategies. Some guy said it was great to repurpose content. Another guy said it was great to use, you know, emails and stuff like that. So that's usually the problem. Sorry about that. That's my Frenchie. <laughs> I was just going to say, that's got to be your, your French bulldog, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, somebody's saying your background's really nice. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. So what would you... If you were to give anyone who is struggling to get their high ticket sale and an advice from whatever that you have done, what would it be? All right, well, so I mean, I would, when I would tell them, hey, don't give up, uh, don't quit, uh, find a mentor, get a custom plan, uh, get the guidance and, and find your, your audience, your, your targeted audience. And not only that, but stay on one social media platform. And, and until you've mastered that one social media platform, 
don't get distracted and start posting on all the social media platforms. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, it's definitely a uh, solid advice. Master one platform before you move on to the next. Um, usually is a thing, I guess I made that mistake as well. Uh, when I first started, you know, like I said, I watched a free YouTube video. This guy said, do this, go everywhere, do everything. So I try to do everything and you spread yourself thin. But honestly, you just, if you, like Jeff said, focus on to one, master it, be really good at it. You know, like you can do things with your eyes closed, move on to the next platform and try to master it. I think that's a, um, a solid advice. And also on a point about, uh, having some kind of custom plan. The only reason why it exists is because in my personal view, uh, every single one of us uh, is uniquely different. Like Jeff, first day I met him, I could already tell that, okay, this guy is definitely not camera shy. You know what I mean? So he should uh, head on like videos, get himself out there, create more speaking video contents and stuff. And then on the other hand, we also have you know a group of students who are too shy, right? So that's where the custom plan comes into place because based on your personality, your strength, your weaknesses, what you like to do, what you dislike to do, there is a way uh, for you to actually execute uh, affiliate marketing the right way, right? So I don't believe in a one-way right. approach, but I believe that we, what I personally like to do is leverage my strengths, right? Uh, and that's exactly the kind of things that I like to do with you guys is to identify what's your strength, Right? If that's your strength, let's hone in and really leverage it. So for you guys, um, if you are watching this, um, just definitely uh, think about what's your strengths, what's your weaknesses, right? If you, have, if you already know what's your strengths, leverage on it, capitalize on it. If you already know what's your weaknesses, work on it, build on it. You know what I mean? Just because it's a weakness doesn't mean that you should hide it in the back pocket. In fact, your weaknesses is the very first thing that you need to work on uh, from my perspective. That's what I personally do. In you know affiliate marketing or in the corporate world, essentially, that's what I always do. Like When I first got into the corporate world, I knew to get to the top, I need to be very good at math. And by the way, I fail in math, right? But as I get there, if I can't, yeah. if I can't do yeah. numbers, I, I know I can't do numbers. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, really, really good point on that. Okay, awesome. So... Um, this is something that most people never ask, uh, but I, I like to keep it very transparent. What was the challenges along the way to get there? Like, what was it? Like, uh, if you wanted to share it with people, what was the challenges you faced? Well, I mean, some of the challenges, so I'm not, I'm not, and I, I love to post and I, I, I'm fairly good at copywriting or creating content to post in terms of writing, but I had to educate myself and I had to get uh, natural with the verbiage so that so that I didn't stumble over my words when I was uh, trying to put a video together. You know, I'll, I'll admit for the first couple of months, even for the first three months, I was using scripts. You know, I was writing down got to a point where I was like, you know, maybe it's better if I just record in segments because I can say just uh, the first uh, a sentence or two each time. And I won't have, I won't be forgetting my lines, you know, I won't forget what to say. And that was something to get used to. It was, I, you know, for a good number of years, because I had myself so uh, educated and I had researched so much content on, on kidney disease prior on, on social media, it, it just flowed out of my mouth, you know, like second nature. And So it, it was a, that was something I had to, that was a hurdle I had to get over because it really humbled me because uh, I saw myself, you know, making mistakes, you know, in the camera, in front of the camera, I had to do several different takes, you know, and, <laughs> and I, I'm, I, I may look like I'm very comfortable and confident in front of the camera, but I get nervous too, especially when it's, when it comes to talking about something that uh, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of years and background and experience behind me with, you know? Yeah. Makes it's, I mean, it makes complete sense, right? Because people always see the end product and if it's a recorded video, truth is everyone would know, right? I don't know how many takes you had to do it. Um, or right. people will see, 
the end results of like if I go live on my Facebook group, right? But maybe I'm always nervous every time I do it, but most often you can't tell. Um, but the more and more you do something, the more and more it just goes away. I remember the first time I shot a TikTok video, my wife was just around the corner. I was like, um, could you please leave the room? Because I can't do this while you're around. It's like embarrassing. <laughs> now, 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 honestly, my wife could be doing her own thing. I'll be like just picking up a camera and, you know, going at it. So sometimes you have this realization that, wow. You know, like you had to go through this hurdle. And over time, you'll become very natural that you can just speak without a script. Or even if you mess up, you'll be able to just pick it up, right? Like once you start doing like long form YouTube videos, you would know, right? It's much harder because the scripts are much longer. And when I first started, I tried to be a perfectionist. After a while, you know what? I pronounced it wrong. Too bad. I'm just going to carry on with it. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So that's really, really great. Um, how... How what 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 are you currently looking forward towards with affiliate marketing? So, well, my goals really were to to make anywhere between five and ten thousand extra a month. I mean, and I want to be able to to gather enough, collect enough, uh, save enough income so that I can retire early. So that's that's what it's going to take for me. You know, five to ten thousand extra a month. You know, for some other people, it may be different, but that was my goal at some point, especially in, in this in this 2023 20, year, is to be able to make at least an average of 10,000 extra a month. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's um, yeah. Most people would say 10K a month. Um, the only thing that I will say on this topic is um, forget about that. I mean, it's good to have that number. But uh, most people don't realize is like worry about the very first step to get to that number, which is closing that first high ticket sale, making that first thousand, that first hundred, that first 500, right? In your case, you've already made two. And because you've already made two, technically speaking, you just need to repeat the process. That's the beauty about it, right? Wouldn't you agree in this case and start to add more things along the side? I know. I'm, I'm, I am my worst and hardest critic, you know, so I had, I had a bad day. I have a bad day yesterday and, and you're aware of this day uh, and, and the reasons why. But so when I, uh, I had to take a step back and a breather because I, I don't take any days off. I mean, I, I'm juggling this, balancing this with my full time job, you know, and even on the weekends, I'm, I'm doing this affiliate marketing full time where I'm not where I'm only doing it part time during the week. So I'm not taking really any days off, you know. Uh, well, I'll continue on. Uh, ahead, so, yeah. Yes, yesterday, you know, it just seemed like everything was just falling to pieces, and everything was going wrong that possibly could, could go wrong, right? And I had a like a slam dunk client that was supposed to uh, uh, pull through for me, you know, and uh, he. He didn't, and, and it was for valid reasons, you know, for valid reasons, but just everything went wrong. So I had to take a step back, a breather, you know, and and just reassure myself that everything's going to be fine and get over the self-doubt that we all get, you know, in this industry or, or when we're striving to do things. I'm very competitive, and uh, sometimes I've had people say that I'm insanely competitive to the point where... Uh, I'm, I'm impatient, you know, so when it gets to that point where I'm impatient and uh, I, I have to take a breather and take take a step back. So yesterday was my breather day. I finally just took a day off. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good thing that you called it out because that's the reality about doing this business, right? Like everyone sees the end result, uh, as I said earlier, like, you know, the sales, you constantly win, but there's always this uh, inner battles and inner challenges that you also need to overcome because whether you like it or not, guys, if you're in affiliate marketing, you are an entrepreneur, right? And an entrepreneur will constantly face problems, not just external, but also internal. So that's why um, having a healthy and strong mindset is super important. And that's why every course that you buy would usually start with a mindset module, right? If you notice, you know what I mean? That's the reason because they know that... Yeah. 
even like I could even yeah even if I laid out the best possible plan but your mindset is not in place you will have self doubt from the very moment that it comes in and it's good that you open up and share that because that's the truth right even I have self doubts at, at times but one thing I know for sure is um, whenever I have this kind of moments take that step back work out sweat just like you i think you ran like extra two you know i don't know double the miles you normally would and then yeah, once your head is clear, right um once your head is clear come back on and just pick up where you left off right if you need to take a break for two days three days by all means go for it right the longest i've done in this last eight months was probably a week to two weeks where i just said you know what i just need to rest my mind um, and, you know, just do whatever first, just get my mind off things. And when I came back, I came back stronger. So every time I took a step back, I came back stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah, it's quite crazy. People don't talk about this stuff. People just talk about how easy it was. You know, it's like how I have a proven system and all of those things. But honestly, it's it's all of these things um, really does matter. Awesome, Jeff. Right. Um, I mean, there, there, were always, there were always going to be obstacles and hurdles that we have to uh, get over and I guess it's how we overcome these uh, hurdles and obstacles and, and our self-doubts, the internal wars. Uh, but we still have to keep our mind on, on, the, on the vision and the end prize. Correct. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, having that end goal or some people will say like remembering that why, it's going to be the very fuel that um, pushes you through. Uh, and the thing is this, right? Like the... To me, the most important thing whenever you are able to identify where is the bottleneck, where is the problem, which part right. do you need to fix exactly, right? Uh, and I think uh, what I realize is most people don't know which part of the funnel is broken. Is it writing content that is broken? Is it... Um, is it their conversion process is broken? Is it broken when they, when they get leads into the messenger and so on? So I think that's also super important. And I, I think in your case, you kind of have a much better idea because you understand exactly what you're doing. And we should be able to easily identify where is the issues, right? So for example, uh, some people would tell me that I'm not closing high ticket sales. That's always the normal thing, right? People who join my group wants to learn how to close a high ticket sale. Hey, Sandy, good to have you. Um, and the very first thing that I always want to understand is, well, tell me exactly what do you do? And when I ask this question, it's not because, you know, like I'm a doctor or anything. I'm just trying to break it up and understand like, all right, you're not getting any high ticket sale. What's the level before a sale? How many people have you actually spoken to? How many people have you actually pitched to? You know, then you realize move backwards, right? Um, and yeah, most people would think you speak to two people, definitely someone will buy. It's not the case. It's a numbers game at the end of the day, um, especially in high ticket, as you will now know. Um, there will be lots of people in the, in the pipeline that will come and seem like, you know, they're ready, they're down, you know, like, Jeff, I have the money, I'm going to buy it tomorrow. And then, you know, tomorrow is a different story. It will happen. It's part of the journey, guys. Right. And this is the very same reason why I told Jeff, like, this is why we need to have a much bigger pipeline. Right. Because if you can get 10 people to the stage of they said yes, but they just need to take that step um, and you have 10 people at this stage, then you won't worry about this one guy who suddenly changed his mind the next day. You know what I mean? It's the same way that right. uh, I mean, advice all. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Exactly. Because. That guy may change his mind now, but he could come around later. So it's a matter of nurturing that person and, and staying in contact. And, and that's what I plan to do with the guy that uh, changed his mind yesterday that was supposed to be a slam, slam dunk and became a no dunk, right? Uh, it's yes, a matter of nurturing them, staying in contact with them, and finding other people, getting other people into the pipeline to shoot. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good point, right? It's all about nurturing them because we're talking about high ticket, right? High ticket, not everyone will buy right off the bat usually. Not everyone. It does happen, but not everyone. Um, but most often, people need time to really get to know who you are, what do you stand for, 
um, is it worth to to even invest with you? Even some people who told me no, uh, you know, as far as few months ago, eventually, you know, comes back to buy from me because everyone's silently watching and trying to see like, is this guy consistent? What's his post all about? Right? Uh, what is his personality is like? And that's also why, you know, the Facebook post is actually important because technically, um, the Facebook post is there designed to sell on your behalf without you even realizing right? If you have Facebook professional mode, and I think you shared yours, how many reach yes, did you get yes. uh, in the last month? Uh, the last, last 28 days, I had, I, reached, I had a reach of 48,000 people. There you go, right? And that, that essentially tells you that it's 48,000 people um, that has reached your post. Hopefully, my line's not breaking. Um, that could potentially be a lead, could potentially be a, a customer as well. All right, Kylie just tuned in. All right, guys, so um, probably ask the last few questions here. But if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask us, ask Jeff, just drop it in the comment as well, and we'll circle um, on it. So anything else you would like to share with everyone that's watching right now, Jeff? Yeah, well, so you, you mentioned something earlier that kind of like struck a chord with me, right? Uh, We'll do things sometimes at the beginning that we're, that we're uncomfortable doing or that uh, we've n not done very often. You know, we're inexperienced with that category. And kind of reminded me of uh, when, I was, when I was in the Army in Germany. I was, you know, just a brand new soldier. And we're going through these exercises to, uh, to perform these uh, things on our, our, our equipment. I work on missile systems. And they, as a brand new soldier, you have to get trained up and evaluated. And when you get evaluated, not only do you get evaluated by uh, an evaluator, but everybody in your platoon is watching. And, and so I remember when I was a brand new soldier doing this, that I was so nervous because everybody was watching me. Everyone was paying attention to everything I was doing. And that's what I felt like. Uh, at the very beginning of, of learning the new verbiage and, and learning all these new steps and, and procedures and things, I felt like a brand new soldier. But as I'm going through this and, and practicing and practicing and going through these uh, procedures and these steps, uh, I get less nervous and uh, I get more confident. So with rep uh, repetition will dictate that you can get more comfortable with the uncomfortable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think I have a post that, that says something like repetition, repetitions is the key to mastery, right? Just like speaking, um, because, you know, nobody is a born natural speaker, right? You're not even me, honestly. Um, but I did it so often um, whenever I travel that I could just go there. And like, oh, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Today we're going to do blah, blah, blah. You know, as though like I've been doing it forever, but it's just because I've done it over and over. Um, it becomes a lot uh, easier, just like the live videos as well. So yeah, uh, super awesome. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think the last thing about Jeff that's interesting is um, definitely go, uh, if where, where should everyone um, uh, follow you? check you out is it on your facebook is it in your tiktok where would you like them to see the kind of stuff that you've been up to um the kind of work that you've been doing well i'm, I'm most active on, on facebook so you can find me on facebook uh i'm active on instagram but not as active and i have a a really active uh youtube account as a matter of fact my youtube channel is in the process of getting monetized pretty proud of the fact that within a three and a half month period, I was able to not only uh, gather 4,000 watch hours, but 1,000 subscribers on this channel that I started on the 1st of October. Yeah, absolutely crazy, guys. Like, again, you know what I mean? Like, it's a bit, it's a bit more rough, but honestly, what's your excuse, guys? Like, if you're watching this, 51-year-old, close to high ticket sales in 10 days, YouTube, blowing up um tiktok getting there i suppose like still in early stages he's creating crazy visuals as you can see in his backdrop it's always so elaborated he literally has 
I don't know how many costs, how, how many superhero costumes do you have, bro? Right? <laughs> so, so I, I'm a superhero fan. It started from when my twin brother Jared and I were really young, you know. Uh, but in and the kidney donor advocacy uh, niche that I was prior to this, I collected probably six to eight different uh, superhero cosplay costumes. And uh, if you if you go into my master bedroom, you'll see like a it's a it's a wardrobe. It's a full wardrobe specifically for my costumes. And I even I even have those uh, mannequin heads to put my masks on. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. So basically, just to recap about Jeff, 51 years old, um, day job, pretty much a uh, something very unusual as well. Missile technician, ex-army guy, uh, loves um, superheroes, costume, has a green room. Absolutely crazy, guys. I definitely recommend check out his content because it's not it's not something that I'll normally find. Um, any last words for the for people still watching, Jeff? Uh, well, Anything else you like? Thank you. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And uh, please, if if you have any questions in detail, you know you can get with me after after the broadcast, and uh, I will answer your questions uh, personally. I want to thank thank you uh, also, Ali, for your guidance, your mentorship, and uh, your custom plan that you've given me. Uh, without you, I wouldn't be where I am right now, and I wouldn't be. Happy in the direction I'm going. Awesome. You're most welcome, brother. So I just drop the link. You can find him in the group depending on where you're watching this or even on my feed. Uh, feel free to reach out to Jeff, guys, because he just went through it not long ago, which also means that it's really fresh in his mind and he could probably give you an insight or two um, if that's something that you guys are needing. Um, and yeah, super awesome. Uh, thank you for coming on as well, Jeff. Super excited to see um, where you take this and more wins to come. I'm pretty sure you'll you know share in the group uh, and make a post about it, brother. So yeah, awesome. Thank you everybody for tuning in again. Uh, and we'll see you guys in the next live. See you all. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. All right. Okay. All right, this last comments. <laughs>